Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Project Plyco. Got a big one for you today. Some massive buildings going into this, some intricate, some crazy architecture, lots of really cool, innovative, interesting designs. We're placing five down in this episode here today. It's gonna be a banger. So why don't we get right on into it? And our first build of the day is going to Project Planko Sublines. This is uh, created by Sublines and he says, use the sign thing to align. And that's about it. No park count on this. Uh, I trust that Sebi uh, did the right thing. I don't think we have to keep checking park counts on this. A uh, bit of a trust system here. Some dancing windows. LODs. Hello. Um, <laughs> really interesting choice and neat build from Sebi on this one. Now, while you did give me a alignment sign, he duplicated one of these and tried to line it up with the one that was pre-existing there. Um, I felt that it was a little bit off for whatever reason. I had to also go in and add extension the sidewalk as this was still all grass so i mean i lined it to what he had but then i also i also just made sure it kind of like went with the sidewalk a little bit I don't know, but it was close. Now there is this little gap here. Uh, before I go and fill that with, you know, extend this concrete over, I'll see what this builder does first. Uh, maybe they go a little bit over, who knows? Maybe they use their own foundation, so I'll figure it out. But yes, a beautiful and uh, highly sophisticated architecture building from Sebi here. I expect nothing less than for him to do something uh, very extraordinary like what we see here today. So I guess it's like some sort of commercial building or super luxury apartments. <laughs> I mean, there's there's nothing on the workshop. It is what it is. It's a piece of art right here on one of our main streets. Beautifully done, Sebi. Before we go and check the nighttime lighting, I think I'll just hopefully remember to check the nighttime lighting across all of them at the very end. Good douche. <laughs> There's the thick boy. A monstrous creation. City building, city building 13 by Trooper Matthew. A megalith build. Uh-oh. That wasn't my fault. <laughs> that is the fun of my task. I get to find everybody's bugs. Fantastic. I just increased your part count by six pieces. You have officially gone over. <laughs> I don't know if that was the proper solution there. Maybe I should have taken one of these edges. Let's try that instead. There, how's that? <laughs> these are supposed to be review videos, guys. And every time I go to talk about something, I notice new interesting bugs. Uh, always great. Maybe, uh, maybe I didn't quite do that right. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. As I was saying, a megalithic build, massive commercial office build. I love the shape of it. B doing this big cylindrical shape plus adding, you know, a square piece to it, but then an angled piece to it. Really filling out your volumetric cube near perfect uh, on one of the more challenging and difficult builds to do. I mean, definitely, uh, uh, really well done by Trooper here. Frontier, which is the developers of Planet Coaster. Entrance around corner. That's cool. And then the builder sign. Some uh, posters on there. The windows are nicely uh, shaded differently. Some people have lights on. Some people don't. Really cool balconies up here with, you know, little animatronics to bring it to life a little bit more. I mean, it's incredible. Oh, what have I? Super secret planet shed prototype planet shed well there's an easter egg and it's nicely obscured there but <laughs> if you look for it you can find it i'm not mad at it they're having fun with their little easter eggs looks great from all sides i mean this has got to be one of the most awe-inspiring builds in this entire park I, I think at this point based off of everything we've done so far probably the biggest build i mean he's got the length and i've got the girth <laughs> Mine's the uh, fattest building in terms of footprint so far, I believe. Or the cinema, maybe. I think the cinema might edge me out in girth. <laughs> but this is, yeah, very tall. I I'm curious to know what the part count was. It doesn't... S oh, no, it does say 1,648 out of 1,650. All right. Well, you're two under, but I used two pieces to fix your bug. So you're right on par exact amount. Uh, however, this building did have some issues uh, with the neighbor and stuff. I will show that in a second. I had to add in 
about eight pieces or so there. Uh, just, just in the case that, I don't know, we get a helicopter shot going over here. Uh, there's no gap. This basically was nothing there before. But I also understand what Trooper was doing, trying to be efficient. Don't build what you don't see, right? And in this case, his actual inside is hollow. Don't build what you don't see. Uh, crap. And I forgot to do that here. I knew I was not done. You're never finished with these things. Never finished. So what I should have done here, delete all these inside faces. But also, we have a shop here next to Abby's build. And because it butts up here, I actually don't need any of these either. And I could just delete until we see a hole. And that... And that technically means I can also delete all these inside faces on Abby's build too, other than the ground level. Oh, maybe not those walls. Now, why delete just a, a few pieces here and there when it technically seemingly doesn't really matter? Well, the whole idea is to not build, uh, don't build what you can't see. Uh, if we can spare eight pieces here, another dozen there and a dozen here, it adds up. It adds up over the course of time. And so far, I must have deleted at least 500 pieces in this park already. So, I mean, that is uh, definitely going to help. That's a whole extra building. At the end of the day, maybe I made a mistake here. That's what you have to be careful for, though. So in theory, all I can really afford to delete here is this middle column because these outer ones are being used as trim, I think. Correct. Okay, getting back to what I was talking about, I was saying that this might be a problem later. We will have to wait and see what your neighbor does. Originally, the intention was to have these open balconies, so the building should, in theory, end right here. Trooper did know of this, but maybe they're... What the heck? Where'd this window come from? <laughs> oh, hopefully I pulled it out of here. <laughs> hopefully, uh, Trooper was talking with his neighbor, and he knows that the building is going to come up to here, or that something's going to happen. Either way, it's not a big issue to... Uh, uh, fix that later. With that being said, as a note to the builders, and I know this video will probably come out by the time everybody's done, but note to future builders and to just uh, people doing these things in general, it's probably better to just, you know, take the extra part count to just fill this in. There we go. I'm not sure if I did that ent entirely right. Um, your concrete seems off color here, by the way. Mm, I don't know what's going on with that. Might just be the lighting. Oh, I deleted it. It's, it's better to fill this in. And if your neighbor doesn't, does have a wall here later, it's much easier for me to uh, delete something than it is for me to rebuild it entirely. So other than that, I think it's uh, a beautiful build, a few adjustments, a few tweaks, but for as big and as massive of a build that it is, a lot less fewer problems than I expected. And as mentioned earlier, some smart building design choices trooper trying to save on part count where, where they could. So really smart build, beautiful design. Let's go check out the next one. Pop Ad Vintus Apartments created by Zeliet, or as known as Zero Star 2. So this is one of the ones uh, I did a feedback video on. We have some behind the scenes videos that are unlisted. They can technically be found in the playlist if you guys want to see a little bit more of the behind the scenes stuff uh, going on. Sometimes rather than me typing out a bunch of stuff and posting a bunch of screenshots in Discord, I like to just make a video and publish that. This was one of the ones uh, that I originally made a video for because the building only came out to here and it didn't quite fill its volume cue. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a speed build, even though I said I was going to avoid doing that. But you can see it playing in the background here. The build came in as the new one. And what ended up happening is the creator decided, for whatever reason, I'm just going to build a whole back alleyway worth of stuff. Scaffold, windows, decor, trash cans, yada, 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 yada. And while neat and all, it actually doesn't work because there's no roads, there's no paths, there's no walkways, there's no app absolutely zero crevice that lets you get to the behind and back of that building. It's a lot of detail that you could would never ever see. It doesn't really make sense. It's actually also just a lot of wasted part count. What I originally asked for from this builder was just to bring his building back, extend it further back so it touches the other buildings and fills his volume cube. So there's a look at what I had to delete and change. Now that we're looking at the building here, I brought it out to here. I probably should have brought it out to where uh, this building is. 
I think that's about as big as the volume cube was, but it's a bit of a half space. And then I got to use half pieces. I got to duplicate. I got to, it's, it's going to be more part count heavy. And I think from this angle, this angle, that angle, even just like a, a helicopter view. I mean, the only time it kind of looks strange is if you do a dead down shot, uh, which is pretty much unlikely to ever occur. So I think from basically every angle now, it basically fits and does the job. I'm not going to be too picky. We don't need to butt them up perfectly. But when there was all of this detail back there, it was also something you would never get to see. The next problem was it exposed Trooper's building. There was a gigantic hole here. So by extending the building back, like I originally asked this crater to do, uh, just doing it myself this time, it covered Trooper's hole. And then what was left over, I filled. So now no matter what angle you come at it, even if it's a glimpse, it's at least covered up and looking decent. So yeah, this building's fixed. Now talking about it aesthetically, it looks good. It's a little, it's got some overgrown ivy. I uh, originally made the comment that it reminded me of a building from The Last of Us. It's so overgrown, it has trees growing on the roof. Uh, I like the change that you did here. Originally, this was full of ivy. Lots and all, everybody had grass in their windows. And you just put a black panel in there. And that is for the purpose of when you look at it at nighttime, you can see through the windows at night, but not day in this game. So all of these windows were full of trees. It looked very strange. And this crater deleted them and put a black panel. I like that idea so much. I actually did it to Abby's window because I originally, she had some candies in there and I deleted them because it was like 150 pieces of candy. Yeah, it didn't really, you couldn't really notice them anyways. So it's a very expensive, small touch when I think three or four panels perfectly just solves that problem for very cheap. Plus we're not really looking to look in the windows more so the shop right? The, the foot level. So yeah, if, if there was anything you wanted to add on the, the foot level, I probably would have recommended it. Just build out something here. Even if it's like one thing deep, have a couple people standing in here and then your black panel here so that you could see into the window and see people going into their apartments or whatever. Just so when we're walking down the street, we do see something. If there's any windows I would have done it for, it would have been the, the ground level, but too late now. <laughs> I like it for what it is. That's probably the only thing that I think would have been a nice touch of detail. Looking at your Steam Workshop, you say you used 491 pieces. I assume you had a thousand because it's one of the bigger buildings. This one's smaller as 400. So yeah, you could have definitely had like a little scene in here. And that's a, probably the only thing that I would say would take this to the next level. Other than that, I think it's a solid apartment building for sure. Fits well, uh, looks good. And now that Trooper and your building's in here right next to the Stay Puff, they're all cohesive cohesively kind of smoosh together, blend together. As mentioned from the previous video, when we got all of these buildings in, this whole little section of the park is actually coming together quite nicely. Just like two more builds and a park to get in. And this strip is done. Very like crampy, claustrophobic, tightly packed area. It's one of the more congested areas in the park. And it's uh, kind of like a front and center area. We're gonna have something here later on, but yeah, it looks uh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. So let's uh, change the time of day here and move on to the next build. Okay, here we are at the Lockjaw Building, Building 31. And I guess the downside to not showing you guys the process of playing it sit down, you don't get to see the volume cube. But the volume cube was quite large. Now this builder decided not to make a big large building and I actually agree with this. It, I think it was a smart judgment call. Generally speaking we want people to fill the cubes perfectly or as perfect as they can get. Uh, I fill up I would say majority of the cube if not all of it especially for specific buildings like what trooper has done his cube may have come up to here but he filled majority of it while this is probably not the majority maybe just half of the cube 60 percent maybe a bit more 70 65 percent what this ends up doing here is it creates sight lines between these two contest submissions so we'll have mexico here we'll have spain here and at least when you're walking down the street past spain you can still see mexico and there's not this gigantic building cutting your sight lines. I quite think this 
worked out really well. So I agree with the decision. I think there was a happy accident here that Mr. Vanderpants did not really know about. Either he didn't know about it or he's extremely in tune with the project. And basically, if we just look over here, that's Captain Lockjaw's private island. There's a whole Captain Lockjaw ride going there. And this is like a Captain Lockjaw residential building that basically from here on this balcony, you will be able to see the Captain Lockjaw ride. Now, mind you, once the Spanish building and ride and all this goes, it probably will might block the sight lines, but it's relatively close to Lockjaw Island, which is kind of cool. I think that is uh, interesting. And the building shape itself, cute little boxy build, then boom, pirate ship. I like the angles. I like the shape of it. It's very modern. It's very clean. The setup guide was quite nice too, but I would say it didn't quite fit perfectly. There's a few overhang, but I painted all that black. You can barely notice it. And if I shoved it over the other way, it would be a larger gap on this side. So I mean, it fit pretty much perfectly. I was thinking about moving some of this stuff over, but then it created uh, more issues. So I just figured I'll just paint it and it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's a nice fit. No issues with this one whatsoever. Probably one of the easiest ones to place down. So thank you for that, Mr. Vanderpants. And a beautiful Captain Lockjaw pirate ship modern building. <laughs> really cool. And last but not least is the one beside us, da Daddy Poe. Daddy Poe Sil City Building 32, Poe Incorporated. And what do they say on the workshop? 947 pieces. Not sure what the actual amount was, but I'm just going to trust they did it. Uh, they did uh, make a description here. It's a modern office city building by the lake with a fake shop below. The colors help give the structure more depth by outlining different materials within the build. The architecture is based off of, of my town's newer modern modern downtown style where plot space is about foot traffic then car traffic and art is part of the overall look of the build from angles easier to align with asphalt in the front building so yeah i mean it's an interesting style like i i personally haven't seen really like wooden apartments seems like a fire hazard but luckily we have a uh, fire department getting placed into the park just over here <laughs> but I, I have seen larger buildings that have like wooden trim almost feels a little bit resort ish you know something that you would see when you go to a, a resort it's it's an interesting build for sure uh, i do like the backside. it does create for some interesting sight lines so when you are in other areas of the park you're not just looking at a, a plain brick wall you know it's cleaned up it has an interesting patio design for what's going on up here it's very um it's a very interesting take it's very artistic and for those who don't know this used to be a gigantic red spanish building <laughs> i did it in one of my uh private review videos but I think Daddy Poe was misunderstood that this was supposed to be a city build and because it was next to the Spanish contest thought that this needed to be a Spanish style. Now I do say I think this is much more fitting much more appropriate especially with what your neighbor has built next to you the Spanish building would have looked a little bit out of place and awkward and I think this at least I think it was Daddy Poe that built the last one and he had to rebuild it unfortunately. I think this is much better overall and you did a fake shop on the front oh look what we found <laughs> oh and a prawn nice good easter egg i like i like what you did here no need to do an actual interior or anything like that worked out great great details on the top as well uh good looking build definitely now there was one small issue with this build as you can see, it's overhanging the contest. And while the instruction guide was extremely detailed, <laughs> look at this instruction guide. Uh, the, the volumetric cube, uh, the, this was actually larger than the volumetric cube. The creator's intention was for me to line up these arrows to the purple contest border. But by doing that, it crashed through. Yeah, if I line it up here to the contest border, right? It crashes through on this side, through his building, right? And I don't like the way that looks. So my option was to either ruin his building or ruin the contest plot, which doesn't currently does not exist. By the time this contest goes live, everybody will be building their contest plot on this version of the map. So they'll see, oh, this guy's like on my plot a little bit. So when they design their little area, well, they just, you know, be mindful of the apartment building right beside it. So that's fine. It's just a tiny little adjustment, but 
Yeah, I find that a lot of people are going over their volumetric cubes just so slightly because of things like trim. And when we were designing some of these plots, and this is just someone just uh, behind the scenes, some information for anyone that's considering doing one of these in the future, this might be like a perfect two tiles wide, right? If we go into our building pieces, take a wall, maybe two or three. That's just a bit under actually. Some of them are more challenging than others, but generally we try to get the length and shapes of the buildings. Sometimes it wasn't as easy to do, but this one's probably like a perfect four wide or something, four or five. Most of the plots, I would say, actually were mathematically calculated to that of the wall tiles. The, these walls are four meter tiles and the we calculated for that. What we didn't calculate for is the fact that trims actually hang outside of that. Trims on the top also hang outside of that. And what you end up getting is what something like over here where we start to crack a little bit and we have to shuffle a little bit and we shuffle 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 and somebody's gonna run out of room so yeah it uh, becomes tricky but then when people build lower than their buddy they can have this nice little crossover everything is okay so thank goodness for that otherwise we'd be shuffle 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 <laughs> and things start to get a little bit crampy so i guess my word of advice to you guys if you ever do a collab you measure out the plot to be you know four tiles wide or whatever but then always leave like a half tile of space between your builds so that people can kind of go crazy with the trim and all that. Now, luckily, most of our buildings are large, spaced out, and do have spaces in between them, and it shouldn't be a problem. If we would have done more dense areas like this, I could see a lot more headaches. In fact, this is the only headache area in the entire park, but as we get to smaller sections, when we're going to be really thematic areas that are fantasy, western, and this and this and that uh it'll be it'll be something to keep in mind going forward so I, I definitely learning a lot from this process and um sure batches as well for helping me level design design as as well as warm gar kind of this is our first time doing it and uh we're learning these things as we go so obviously when i learn something i'm going to share that with you guys in these videos so um it can help you build and take these things into consideration when you uh, are building in our project or whatnot if you're going to do your own in the future but but just some fun information to drop on you guys. Oh, I'm clipping this into the video because I totally forgot that I said I would take a look at the nighttime lighting on these builds. And then I realized uh, as I started the next video, I had completely forgotten. So, I mean, looking great on all of the builds. Really fantastic stuff. And these two over here. Nice and subtle across all the builds. Perfect nighttime lighting. You guys nailed it. Nothing to adjust here. I am very happy. And uh, that's our five incredible builds. We have three in this area, two in this back area. This area is officially kind of done. Just wait for this guy over here. I think I have enough builds to flesh out half or if not most of this area. So I might be doing that next, but I'm generally trying to group these things up so that we can have a little bit of a cohesive video where we get to see like one little area come together. And in this case, this area and this area came together pretty good. When I get like four or five for one of these Asian areas or Italian or French, I would like to do a, a, a France dedicated video uh, coming up here soon, as soon as more of those submissions come in. So really fun stuff. What did you guys think of these five amazing builds? Throw your comments down below and that's gonna do it for this episode of Project Planko. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye now.